Hi, Vince here from Sabina Tech Tips. Today we're going to talk about shunt wound DC motors. And I've got a great example here. This is a 300 horsepower shunt wound DC motor that was being used at a ski lift. Anyway, the shunt fields, there's four of them in this motor. One, two, three, and four, four poles. And there are also four inner poles. One, two, three, four. But we're going to talk about just the shunt fields right now. One of the questions we get asked all the time is, how do I change the direction of rotation on a DC motor? One of the simplest ways to do it is by changing the polarity of the voltage and current going through the shunt fields. And that's so easy to do is you take the two leads, the F1 and the F2 that are coming out to your control, and all you have to do is reverse the polarity of them. And at that point, you will change directions of that DC motor. It's as simple as that. You don't have to do anything with the armature. Just change those shunt fields. Another question we're often asked, how do I know which leads are which inside the conduit box? A lot of times after age and time, the labels have fallen off and they can't identify which wires are which. Well, in most motors, the large leads will be the armature leads. They'll be A1 and A2. They're carrying bigger current, doing more work. The shunt field leads are usually smaller wires and they are carrying less current. So, even if you can't tell what leads are which, just by the physical size, you can tell whether you're looking at the armature leads or the shunt leads. Another question we're often asked is, how can I check my motor to see if the fields are bad or the health of the insulation? And there's two ways to do that. One, and most people have, is a small, inexpensive voltmeter. And you can use that on the ohm scale and measure the resistance of the wires to ground, and you can also measure the resistance of the windings to each other. So by going across F1 and F2, I can see how many ohms it is and compare that to what the nameplate says. Or I can measure from one lead to ground, and hopefully I get a very high resistance reading and tell how good the insulation is. The only drawback to this when you're using a voltmeter is this uses a nine volt battery. Well, a 9-volt battery isn't exactly what you're putting on this motor. This motor runs at 300 volts, so I'm only measuring that resistance with 9 volts. A better indication is using what they call a mega. This mega here is made by Fluke, and it will measure the resistance to ground, and it uses 500 or 1,000 volts. Now I'm getting a more true reading of how this motor is aging and how well the insulation is holding up. Many motors that will measure good with 9 volts will measure bad when I actually put 500 volts on here and measure the insulation. So if you have access to a Megger or your motor shop does, definitely measure using the Megger. And you can actually plot the health of this motor over a couple of years because each year with dirt and moisture, the Megger reading will go down. So if you measured it one year and you got 20 megs to ground, maybe two years later, with a lot of use, it might go down to five megs, and the next year maybe goes to two megs. So now you have a good indication of how it's aging, and then at some point you can decide, I'm gonna pull this motor out, get it steam clean, get the dirt out, re-dip it in varnish, bake it, and I can get that measurement back up to 20 megs. Go ahead. If you end up having bad shunt fields in your motor, this is what the motor shop's gonna do next. They're gonna remove the individual shunt field poles you can see the four positions where we've already taken them out. They will then take the windings and they will cut the copper wire and open up that windings and they'll actually physically have to count how many turns of copper wire are wrapped around that pole piece. In this case, 1,396 turns of about a number 20 wire were used on each of these four pole pieces. Once we removed the windings and recorded the data, the number of turns and the gauge of wire, we can now start making a new pole piece. Here's the winding machine that's being used for this one. We make a bobbin that's physically the same size and we start wrapping the 1,396 turns of wire around this bobbin. Thank you for watching today's episode of Sabina Tech Tips. If you learned anything or gained some new knowledge, click on the like button at the bottom of the screen. If you want to learn more, subscribe. If you have any comments or questions, we'd love to see those. Put those down at the bottom also. Thank you for watching.